God bless you. Good evening. Good evening. This is Apostle Dr. Susie Smallwood with Matters of the Heart on Eternal Life TV uh, on this evening. We bless the Lord for you uh, another day that the Lord has kept us. We thank God for you and your families. We bless the Lord for Eternal Life TV, the airways. We thank God because he's God and God alone. We thank him for our life, health, and strength. We thank God for another episode of Matters of the Heart with Apostle Dr. Smallwood for truly God is speaking in this hour so we bless the Lord, and before we get started, we, I do want to honor the Lord on this evening, and my uh, my husband, I honor my bishop, Bishop Dr. Deborah McAlpine, Senior Pastor of the Gathering of the Remnant in Fort Washington, Maryland. I bless the Lord, and I honor God this evening for Apostle Alicia Faust on this evening. I thank God for this powerful, anointed woman of God. I said, what a blessing it is. Hallelujah. When you know powerful women to my spiritual sons and daughters, Apostle Ferguson in uh, Indiana and Apostle uh, Andrew and Pastor and his wife in Uganda. So I just bless the Lord for who he is and for all he's doing. I thank God for the many women and women women and men in the gospel that are teaching and preaching the word of God to Powerhouse International Ministries in Lewiston, North Carolina with uh, Senior Pastor uh, Patrick Walton and First Lady Diana Water. I do honor you on this evening. God bless you. And to many, many others, God bless you. Love you, love you, love you. Evangelist Sawyer, uh, Mother Donna Moore, hallelujah. Apostle Hagler, love you, love you. Uh, God is just such a wonderful God. So we bless the Lord as we come this evening. I'm going to um, attempt to play the selection. And after that, um, I'm going to talk a little bit in the book of Titus. Hallelujah. However the Holy Ghost leads. Hallelujah. We're going to bless the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you on this evening. We thank you, God, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. God, we bless your name. God, we ask even now, Lord God, that you would forgive us of our sins in the name of Jesus. Lord, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us, oh God. Lord, help us to see things as you see it, God. Lord, help us, oh God, to walk the way that you have ordained for us to walk. Lord, help us to stay in the lane, God, that you have placed us in, oh God, until you elevate in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank and we praise your God, for you're such a good God. Lord, we thank you that you continue to make provision, God. We thank you, God, that in the midst, oh God, of confusion, oh God, and sorrow, and sadness, death, and sickness, God, that you still reign and you rule and you're sovereign and you're still the supreme God. So, Father, we thank you today, God, for there is none like you. Lord, you are the righteous judge. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we thank you today for those, oh God, that are battling COVID all over this nation, God. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would step in, oh God, let your will be done, oh God, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we thank you today, God. We thank you, God, for your word, God. We thank you for your word that leads and guides us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your son, your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary's cross for our sins, God. We thank you, God, that we have to pick up our cross each and every day, and we have to carry our cross. So, Father, I thank you today, God, that no matter what you send our way, God, that we would pick it up, that we would carry it, God, and that we will not complain. God, I thank you today, God, for the men and the women, oh God, uh, that are still standing in the midst of confusion, in the midst of being criticized, in the midst of being talked about, in the midst of being backstabbed, uh, in the midst of people walking away, God. God, they're still standing on the promises of God. Lord, we thank you today that you are a keeper. You are a keeper, God. 
You keep your people in perfect peace uh, whose minds are stayed on you, God. Lord, keep us in your word, God. Uh, Lord, restore our zeal for the word. Uh, restore our zeal for holiness, God. Restore our zeal, O oh God, uh, that we would walk up right before you, God. Uh, sanctify us afresh, O oh God. Uh, Refill us with your Holy Spirit, God. Uh, keep your hand in our hand, oh God. Uh, take us back to the cross, oh God. Uh, take us back to the altar, God. Uh, take us back, oh God, to passing and praying, oh God. Uh, take us back to our first love, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that you're able, oh God, to change hearts today, God. So, Lord, we lift up the President uh, of the United States, God, uh, and his entire cabinet. God. Uh, Lord, we ask that you have your way in him. Have your way in his cabinet, God. Uh, let your will be done, God. Uh, in every house, oh God. Uh, in the White House leading, God. Uh, speak to the President, God. Uh, speak through him, oh God. Uh, oh God, you touch that heart, oh God. Uh, you make him and mold him the way that you would have him, oh God. Uh, to lead this nation, oh God. To bring peace, oh God. Uh, to restore justice and equality, God. Lord, we thank you today, oh God, for what you're doing, God, for your covering us, oh God. We thank you for your hand of protection. We thank you for the angels, oh God, that you dispatched before us, oh God, for the highways and the byways, God, that you keep us covered, God. We thank you for the arm of protection around our children, oh God. Lord, we ask that you bless the children, God, that are being homeschooled, God, that you encourage their parents, oh God, that many of them, oh God, are struggling because they don't understand, oh God, the new things that the children are being taught. But God, you know all things, God. Lord, you lead and guide them, God. Lord, put someone in their path to help them, oh God. Oh God, open up the doors, oh God. Open up doors, God, for some retired teachers, oh God, that they would open up their heart and they would tutor the children children, God, and help the parents of God, that they could assist the children, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we know that you're able. We thank you, God, for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for grace, God. We thank you for the portion of our health and strength, oh God, that we have today, God. Lord, we don't come for our complaining today, Lord, but we come to say thank you. Thank you for keeping us Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for watching over us, God. Thank you for being our healer on today, God. Thank you for being our provider, God. Thank you, God, for being our strong tower, God. Thank you, God, for being our provision. Lord, we thank you for being our chief cornerstone. We thank you, God, for being our fortress today, God, that we can hide, God, under the shadows of your wings, oh God. We thank you, God, for abiding in us, oh God. Thank you for the whole Holy Spirit uh, that lives on the inside of us, oh God. Uh, we thank you, God, uh, that you keep us, oh God, that he continues, oh God, uh, to show us the way, and Jesus continues to intercede for the saints of God. Uh, Lord, keep us connected, oh God. Uh, disconnect everything, oh God, uh, that is out of alignment with your will, God. Uh, Lord, call it to fall by the wayside, oh God. Uh, oh God, keep us, oh God, uh, that we may be be kept, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, lead us in a narrow path, O oh God. Uh, Lord, help us, O oh God, uh, to do that which is pleasing to you. Forgive us, Lord, when we walk out of the way, God. Uh, but Lord, don't let us get away with it, O oh God. Let us call sin, sin, God. Uh, let us love people back to Christ, God. Uh, let us go after that one that wonders aside, O oh God. Let us wonder. Let us go back, O oh God. Let us grab that one, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, let us pull them back in, God. Let us love them back to you, God, that not one soul would be lost, God. Let us do everything that we can do, oh, God, that we will let them know that your love is so great, uh, that your mercy, oh, God, uh, and your justice, oh, God, 
Lord, you love them, oh God, and you want them, oh God, to have a better life, God. Help us, oh God, to speak in love, to speak in truth, oh God, to be patient, oh God, with them, oh God, that we will help them, oh God, to find their way back to you, God. So, Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, oh God, for there is none like you in all the earth, God. We bless your holy name, God. Have your way, God. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Strengthen your leaders, oh God. Take away, God, the worry, God. Out of your people, oh God. Lord, let them know that you, God, are a healer of COVID, God. That you are a healer that of there's no disease that is known to man. Uh, that you're not able to heal because you're all powerful, God. Uh, you're all knowing, God. Uh, you're all seeing, God. Uh, you're all righteous, God. So, Father, we thank and we praise you even now, God, uh, for what you're going to do. Holy Spirit, hide me behind the cross, oh God. Holy Spirit, speak. Lord, let someone, God, hear a word tonight, God. Hear a word tonight, God, that would encourage their heart, oh God. Lord, we ask that you would bless those families that, this morning, this evening, oh God, that are preparing to bury loved ones, God. Oh God, we praise you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That we won't give up on you. Because of death. We won't give up on you God. Because of sickness and disease. But God we're going to draw nigh to you. And you will draw nigh to us oh God. We're going to ask you for wisdom oh God. We're going to ask you to increase our faith oh God. We're going to ask you for strength oh God. That even in our weakness father. That your strength be made perfect in us, oh God. That we won't look and see our circumstance, God, as being bigger than the God that we serve. Because we serve a mighty God. We serve the great God. The great I am that I am. So, Father, tonight, God, let someone see your greatness, God. Let someone hear your love. Let someone hear your, your joy. Let someone experience your peace today, God. Oh, God, comfort their hearts. Make a way, God, out of no way, God. Make a way, God. Encourage hearts today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray these in all prayers in Jesus' name. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. In the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I pray I can get this up. Hallelujah. I do
Hallelujah. This is my exodus. This is my exodus. This is my exodus. Okay? This is my exodus. Where I am, I'm not going to stay here in this place. In this circumstance that I may be facing, I'm not going to stay here in this place. I'm getting ready to make my exit. This is my exodus. I'm getting out of this place because I'm moving ahead in the things of God. This is my exodus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is my exodus. You can choose to stay in a place too long and you become stagnant, just like standing water that don't move. It begins to stink because there's no movement. This is my exodus. Thank you, Lord. I'm not staying in one place, standing still, making no progress, making no steps. But as long as I keep stepping, I'm making progress and I'm getting ready to exit. That means I'm moving from one thing or one place to a different area where God is having me to move through to get to that which is promised by God for my life so that I can fulfill my purpose in the things of God. So I said, I'd be coming out of the book of Titus and um, I'm going to read. My God, my Lord. I was looking for one word and I didn't see it, but God is still good, 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 good. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he's able. He's a good God. He's a mighty good God. Hallelujah. We bless God. We bless God. We bless God. We bless God. We bless the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy. We thank him for his word. Everywhere you read, it doesn't matter where you start. Uh, I've read the whole thing. I said, but uh, I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to start right with chapter 1, and I'm just going to do a brief introduction of Titus. Titus, the um, author, was Apostle Paul, and Paul sent Titus to organize and oversee the churches in Crete. Hallelujah. Uh, the letter also tells Titus how uh, Apostle Paul would like for him to do the job. So there was a job, kind of a job description attached to what uh, Apostle Paul was sending to Titus. Hallelujah. How many of us know that when, even in the secular, when we're given a job, we're given a job description, and that job description tells you what is required and what your boss or your supervisor expect the, 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 the minimum qualification that he expects you to be able to do, but you can exceed what is in that job description. But there are certain things that are absolutely necessary for things to progress the way that they're supposed to because everything must be done decent and in order. So the title of the message today is Keep God's House in Order, Leaders. Keep God's House in Order. Order. Now, sidebar, for God's house to be kept in order, you must be in order. Well, that's how she started. That's the apostle. That's how she rolls. Roll with her or roll without her. But either way, I'm going to give it. And it reads like this. Okay, Paul is, uh, Titus is a Greek. But he was a believer that was taught and nurtured by Paul. Paul also taught Timothy. So it's not nothing new because 
That's what he did as an apostle. Even when churches was established, he was sent back to check on the churches to see how they were operating. For y'all that don't understand, that is one of the roles of the apostle that they helped to establish a firm foundation in the gospel of Jesus Christ, a, a foundational truths and get rid of all these false doctrines. But they don't just sit there to rock and hold your hand because they have to move as God leaves and then you can't just uh, start a church and walk away and lead the leader. You still got to be there to help him first to make sure that the church is operating. And even if you go away, you always come back or you send someone that you have mentored back to check on them to see how they are doing so that you can get a report back to make sure that the house is functioning the way that God wants to see his house and his people operate. There's order in God's house. Leaders, keep your houses in order. He was, uh, to Christ, a Greek probably converted to Christ through Paul's ministry. He had become Paul's special representative to the island of Crete and all believers everywhere. Crete was Greece's, one of Greece's law. It was known for its varied terrain. It had all kinds of terrain there. Uh, Paul calls for order in the church, living right on an island known for laziness. So it, the island was known for laziness. But Paul was saying, look, get this house in order. In other words, I don't care what it was known for, but get this house in order. Get it in order. Get it in order. It was known for gluttony. It was known for lying. And evil. Poor leadership in God's house can't be tolerated. So let's get right into the scripture. And it says, Paul, the servant of God. And, and this is, I'm starting at chapter one. And this is an epistle. An epistle is a letter that. Paul wrote to Titus, which was basically like a spiritual son, maybe even an apostle, upcoming apostle, but definitely uh, he was under Paul, and Paul was sending him uh, on a task. He wrote that letter to tell him what he needed to go and uh, make sure it was taking place and that they were in order and teaching sound doctrine. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Servant is given here first, even before the designation of apostle. Because you're a servant before you are an apostle. You can't apostle nobody and you've never learned how to serve. Hallelujah. It says, according to the faith. Sound doctrine. Of God's elect. Talking about the church. And the knowledge of the truth which is after godliness. Verse 2 said, In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began. God promised uh, etern the hope of eternal life even before the world began. But, has in due times manifested his word through preaching. So God manifests his word through preaching. Well, Jesus, but has in due times, do in due times manifested his word through preaching. God's secret purposes in salvation have been brought to light in the preaching of the apostle, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. God 
committed him to do the work that he was doing. Paul got his instructions from God. He didn't just go out there like a Rambo running around doing some everything and calling it God. Uh -uh. Paul was a powerful man. He was powerful in the spirit. And, and when he was out there working for Satan, he was powerful then too. To Titus, mine own son after the common faith. I'm, I'm raising up a son in the faith. A spiritual son. In the likeness of Titus, I see. Like a student. I'm letting them glean from me. I'm teaching them. I'm showing them the way, what they should do and what they should not do. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we're talking about qualities. For this cause left I you in Crete. Paul said, for this reason... Titus, I left you in Crete that you should set in order. Leaders, keep your house in order or get it in order. So that you should set in order the things that are wanting refers mainly to the church government. It ain't running right. And obtain ordain elders in every city as I have appointed you. And in other words, I need you to put pastors in these churches. Ordain these pastors so they can get busy and get these houses in order. But you got to teach them and train them. A pastor has to be trained also. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, not chasing money, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, for there are many unruly Vain talkers and deceivers whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses. And that's caused by false teaching. Teaching things which they ought not. For filthy lucre's sake, just for the sake of money, they preach in lies and deceiving folk just for the sake of money. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, so slow bellies. This presents an indictment, but one desired by the Holy Spirit. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharp that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men and turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them who are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate. 
Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word, God. We thank you, God, for your word. Paul calls for order in the church and living right on an island that was known for laziness. The people were out of order. Out of order. Out of order. They were out of order. They were out of order. Hmm. He told the aged men, said, but you speak the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Aged women, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Young women, that they may teach the young women to be sober. Now, these are what the older women are supposed to do. The mothers of the church are supposed to be teaching the younger women. But today, you can't teach these young women nothing because they're ready to uh, get an attitude, walk away from the church, and curse you out right in church. Because they have no respect for God's house, themselves, their parents, God, and nobody else. Many of them don't have the respect of a dog. That they may teach the young women to be sober. To love their husbands. To love their children. To be discreet. Chase. Not running around, slipping and sliding. Keepers at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. Husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourselves a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptedness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he who is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be so obedient unto their own masters and to place them well in all things and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Don't argue with your master. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. According to the faith, your faith in the work, the finished work that Jesus did on the cross. This is chapter 1, Titus and we're going back to verse 1. Verse 2, it says, the hope of eternal life. And to acknowledge the truth, which is after godliness, the idea is that proper faith in the cross of Christ will produce godliness. If you believe the truth of the gospel, of what Jesus did on Calvary's cross for all of sins of mankind, then you will have a godly lifestyle. You will live a godly lifestyle. You still must be born again. In hope of eternal life. And we know eternal life is a promise that God has given us if we do the things of God, that we obey his word, that we honor God, that we teach and preach the truth, that we live the truth, that we walk in truth, that we walk in love, that we do what God called us to do, that we pray to our Heavenly Father, and that we have a relationship with God. 
Now you know you can't have but so much order in your church if y'all don't have nothing in your church about prayer and fasting. Now, you can pray. You can pray because it's good to pray because the Bible tells us to pray. But if all you're doing is praying, and I am sure not knocking prayer, but if all you're doing is praying and not fasting, you ain't got no no real power. You're not going to do, you're not going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Oh, you see some small thing, but the real things that will cause people to want to come to your place of worship, it's going to require you to make a sacrifice. You're going to have to fast and seek the Lord's face for some of these things. Even some of the spirits and demons that come through your door. If you don't have a strong life of prayer and intercession and fasting, you're not going to do nothing with those spirits or demons. Nothing. They will wipe the floor with your behind. Step to them and see what happens. You see, I've seen it up close and personal. <laughs> I've seen them take down over a 250-pound man. And I mean, and swing him around like a rag doll on the floor. Because you stepped into something you wasn't ready for. <laughs> see, you can't never think more highly of yourself than y'all. Get your house in order. Then the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you and will show you where you are. Because sometimes we can think that we're in a place spiritually uh, that we, uh, we, we've gotten this far in Christ. Okay, oh God, I'm elevated now to a place that, you know, I can just go there, Lord, and I can just pray and lay my hand there. And this is going to take place. Ain't nothing going to take place. You know why? Because you haven't been in the presence of God yourself. No. And just because you get up and pray and preach, that don't mean that you're spending no time with God. What is the quality time outside of the pulpit that you're spending in the presence of God? And it's going to tell on you too. It will tell on you. You just keep, keep watching and you'll see for yourself. Just keep watching. And you see things going down that you know for a fact God is nowhere in it. And you know it. Because God is showing it right to you. And and they have lied to themselves so much. Do you know they don't even know that it's out of order what they're doing? And they do not want to be told the truth. They don't want to come out of that place. Because they don't want to be held accountable. Because once you're told the truth and you accept the truth of the gospel and they don't have the revelation, they clearly don't, do they wouldn't be doing things that way. But because they don't, they're in a place that they're going to be stuck on stupid for life because they really don't want to know no better. So stay right there. Stay in that place and tell me about it later. Because, you know, for me, I, I can never be stuck on stupid because I love to learn. And I'm always reaching out to see, you know, what can I, you know, get more understanding about. God, give me more wisdom on this, God. Lord, help me to see, Lord, who would be a good role model, God, that I could learn and glean from, God. Yes, I have my overseer, uh, my bishop, Bishop Dr. Deborah McAlpine. Yes, I do. But I also have apostolic uh, people in my life as well. You know, as well as my bishop, I said, who is apostolic also, I said, even though she's a bishop, I said, but uh, we, we have five-fold operation in, 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 her, in her ministry. It's five-fold. So I bless the Lord that even when I need counsel, I call her. Yeah, I sure do. But I have other apostles that I call. I have other bishops that I call. And I have a relationship with them. And I can talk to them. I said, but at the end of the day, I go to my overseer, my pastor, and a couple others that I truly trust because I've seen the 
evidence manifest of the life that they live. And it lines up with the word and the will of God. So, the word in, in, in verse 2, it says, In the hope of eternal life, that is, if you stay with God, who is in Christ, and you remain in him, which God, who cannot lie, says literally in the Greek, unliable God, promised before the world began, before the times of the ages. God made that promise. If you follow the leading of God and you follow the Holy Spirit's leading, you get in the Word of God and you study the Word of God, let me tell you something. If you're not picking up your Bible from Sunday to Sunday, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing but spinning your wheels. you just like you're in a mud hole, but you ain't coming out because you ain't going nowhere. I, I, I just can't see how somebody can waste time like that. Redeem the time. What are you playing games for? And who are you impressing? And if you're not picking up your Bible, and you're not studying, and you only hear the preacher on Sunday, you're still lost. You're lost because you're disobedient, because that is not what the Word of God tells you to do. It says study to show yourself approved. Well, already you're in sin. Because you're disobedient to God. You'd rather hear a man read and give you their rendition of the scripture than to read the scripture and allow the Holy Spirit to give you the revelation from the word. And that shows that you're a man seeker. You're not a God seeker. You're a man seeker. Whatever. You know, if, if, that, if that's what your salvation is, Stick with that and let me see where it takes you. Nowhere. I'm just going to help you out and tell you in advance. It takes you nowhere. It's good to have a pastor. But it is, your pastor expects you to read your word. Your pastor expects you to study your word. Your pastor expects you to pray. Your pastor expects you to fast. And to seek the Lord. That's what your pastor expects of you. But can he make you do it? No. Can she make you do it? No. But all they can do is tell you the benefits of doing it. The benefits you'll start to see yourself growing in the word. The more you read, even if you don't understand it. Do you know that God will start to give you the understanding of what you read? The Holy Spirit will start to reveal. He'll start to reveal. Even if it's in a dream. But understand this. This church was way out of order. It was out of order. It was out of order. <laughs> They were lying, doing evil things. They were lazy. They were sitting around and they were greedy. So they, 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 were, they had a spirit of gluttony. They were greedy. Didn't want to do nothing but want to be out of order. You can't lead no church like that. You can't be lazy because running a church requires work. And the pastor can't do it all. So Titus was going to Crete to check out what in the world is going on. But Paul made it plain. Real plain. Huh. Said, but has in due time manifested his word. God in due time has manifested his word through preaching. The word of God manifests. Manifest. It becomes visible. The word of God becomes visible. It becomes alive. Through preaching. God's secret. Purposes. Are brought to light. 
by the preaching of the gospel. So it's important that even when we go to God's house, and we know that right now many times, you know, people are not going for various reasons, you know, and, I, and, and I'm not condemning nobody for why you do or you don't. Not, that's not why I'm here. But many, you know, due to uh, health conditions and due to uh, conditions that are beyond man's control, uh, the church is pretty much empty. But when you go, if you're going to go and wear that hot mask anyway, you ought to go expecting God to do something in your life. You ought to go expecting God to change your heart, to change your thinking, to change your motives, to change the way you look at things. There should be a change. You can't sit in church Sunday after Sunday. I don't care where you inside, outside, on the sidewalk. And hear the word of God week after week. And, and Bible study online. And you tell me that God is not moving. No, you're not moving. But God is. He's just not waiting for you to move. Because you choose not to move. But God is not going to change his plans because you refuse to move. You just want to do what you want to do. You want to have it the Burger King way. I'm going to do things my way. Well, it's not your show. It's God's house. And God requires order in his house. When the preacher preaching, you should be listening and taking notes. And if you're not taking notes, you should be really taking in, uh, asking God, Lord, you know, commit that word to my memory, commit it to my spirit, God, that I'll be able to meditate on it. But you should always have your little pad that you can jot the scripture down on and, and that you can put a word down on that you can look up when you leave out of God's house so that you still can meditate back on that word that was ministered. You can't ask, uh, get up on Sunday and start asking the pastor a whole lot of questions about his message. No, that's not the time you want to do all that. Go to Bible study. No, but that's not the time. When preacher, 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 tired, hot, and don't want to ask a thousand questions for you. If you're that interested, come to Bible study. Get on the prayer line. Talk to Jesus. But don't sit there and hold up the pastor for the next two hours after they done sweated out their clothes in the pulpit and they hot, they thirsty, and they hungry, and they tired. Because a lot of times they're wrestling against spirits even while they're ministering. You're wrestling against different spirits. So you cannot, you cannot afford to not pay attention. My God, to Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, faith in the great sacrifice of Christ. Now, after the faith, Paul had faith in what Jesus had done on the cross. So Titus also had faith. He was his son in the faith. Said so grace, mercy, and peace. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Christians are to be self-disciplined as individuals. And this is out of chapter uh, 2 of uh, Titus. And I read part of this and it said that they must also be orderly as people who form one body. The church. The church. The Christians are to be self-disciplined just like the mothers, the young women, the young men, the old men, the leadership. We all should be disciplined. You should be disciplined. You should respect God's house. You should respect God's leaders. You should respect the word of God. Christians are to be self-disciplined. Disciplined. 
Discipline yourself as individuals. And they must be orderly as people who form the body of Christ, the church. We need to do this today and obey this message when discipline is not respected or rewarded by our society. In our society today, discipline is not respected. Discipline is not rewarded. Discipline is not accepted. Discipline makes people angry. Discipline makes people walk away from the church. But then the Bible says that God chastens those that he loves. When your leader chastens you, when your leader even may have to correct you, your leader may even have to rebuke you. They're not doing it to hurt you. They're doing it to build you, to spare you, to save you. Because many have already experienced what they see you doing and they know what the outcome is going to be. So if you did that on the outside, don't bring that in God's house and still expect the leadership to say nothing and they're looking straight at it. I don't care who you are. You can't bring the world in God's house and let it take over. If they're not coming in to be transformed and to accept Jesus Christ, then they better sit down and be quiet. But ain't no demonic activity. Got no business taking over God's house and leadership sitting there shaking in their boots. Because you can't lead nothing that you're afraid of. So through our efforts as Christians may not, though our efforts as Christians may not be appreciated or respected, we still must live a life that is pleasing to God and live upright. Obey our government. Control our tongues. You can't kill your sheep. Now, yes, you are to tell them the truth. Yes, you are to call out sin. Yes, you are to correct them when they're going too far to the left and you're giving warnings after warnings after warnings and they're hearing message after message. You're teaching and you're teaching and you're teaching. You're talking to them privately over and over and they still going to disrespect you and dishonor God's house. Then it's time to rebuke. With the witness. Because they don't even know. That it hurts you also to have to do it. But you do it because of the love. That you have for God. And you want to please God. And you know if you love them. You don't want them to miss the mark. By not letting them see the error of their ways. Baby you can't do this that way. It's been tried many times before, and every time it was done before, it ended up in devastation. And if you continue on the path that you're on, I can promise you, you will have some serious consequences, and they will not be positive. Got to control your tongue. Speak to your people in love. Speak to each other in love. Speak to your sisters and brothers in love. Stop telling lies on your sisters and brothers. Stop lying on them. If you don't know what you're talking about, shut your mouth up. But don't just tell lies and then act like we're, the, we're, we're wonderful. We're just great. We're great. But you know you done lied on this one, that one, and the other. And then you talk to them and you act like you haven't said a word when every word that you said, I already know about it or they already know about it. You can't do that. You can't say that you're, I'm just, I'm just trying to mind my business. I'm just trying to please the Lord. You ain't trying to please the Lord if you, every time I turn around, my name is in your mouth and you telling a lie on me. You ain't trying to please the Lord. And if you're bashing the pastor and his congregation, every time you talk, ain't nobody saved but you. 
You're not trying to please the Lord. You're trying to destroy the body of Christ. You First of all, let God judge his church, not you. You ain't, you're not even in a position to judge because you can't even judge yourself. Because when you don't have the understanding of a pastor, you don't have the compassion of a pastor. You don't have the wisdom of a pastor. And when God speaks to a pastor and tell him to do something, many times the wives may not be in agreement. But first of all, you are not pastor in the church for your wife. You're saying that God called you. It's good if she's a uh, she's there and she supports you, but whether she do or not, you still got to do what God called you to do. She must do what God called her to do. That's fact. It's not popular, but it's still the truth. You still got to tell the truth. I don't care who it is. We should live together peacefully in the church and be living examples of our faith in in and out of our community and anywhere we go we are christian born again servants of the most high god and wherever we go we should be recognized as just that there's something about that man there's something about that woman they don't act like everybody else well don't you know when god changed you you're not supposed to act like everybody else. Don't you know when God comes inside of your heart and he forgives your sins and he transforms your mind and let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. When God changed your mind, when God changed your heart, you're not supposed to be still acting like a person in the street that don't know God. You're supposed to be that example for Christ that will lead somebody else to Christ. You're supposed to be that one that God will be able to send out into the hedges and the highways to compel men and women to come and to give their lives to Christ. You're supposed to be that one that can give a man or a woman a word of encouragement and not tear them down and let them think that God will not forgive them because God will forgive you. All you got to do is repent and God will come into your heart. He will sup with you. Just ask God to forgive you of your sins in Jesus name. Tell him to come in your heart to live on the inside of you to show you the way that he would have you to go. Ask God to lead you to guide you that God I give my life to you. I give myself away God. Lord I yield to you Lord. Not my way God but your will be done in my life God. Lord I don't know the way to go. I've made so many mistakes God. So many people have told me, God, that I would never amount to nothing, that I'll never be nothing, that I'll never buy, nobody would never want me, God, that I'll never go nowhere in life, that I would be just like my no good daddy, that I'd be just like my no good mama, but God, you said that I was made in the image and the likeness of you, and that didn't have nothing to do with my mama or my daddy, so God, I'm going to take you at your word, you said, God, that and we would uh, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins, that he rose on the third day. Hallelujah. He died on Calvary's cross for the sins of this world, but he didn't stay in that grave. They buried him, but on the third day he got up and he rose with all power in his hands and he's standing there today. God's raising up a brand new people. He's raising up a brand new generation. He's calling people from all corners of the earth. He's calling people that will serve him, that will not be ashamed of the gospel. He's calling people that will be bold with the gospel that will stand on the street corner that will stand in the projects that will stand in the bank that will stand in the middle of the street and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ they will not take down they will not compromise they will not water it down they won't worry about whether you like them or not they're not worried about being part of your crew they're not worried about doing what you do they're trying to be authentic and they're not that God has placed 
placed on their life and to fulfill their assignment that God has given them. So you stand strong in what God has called you to do. Bring order in your house. Keep your house together. Everybody's house may not look like your house inside, but that's all right. You continue to stand. You continue to obey God. You continue to hear the voice of God. You follow God if nobody follows. You continue to follow God. You watch God. He'll send those that are hungry, that are thirsty, that are panting after Him. They want more. They they want more. They want to hear the truth. They're tired of being lied to. They're tired of being wounded. They're tired of being beaten down. They're tired of being robbed. They're tired of being prostituted. They're tired of being pimped. They're tired of being looked over. They're tired of people telling them what they can and cannot do because of what sex God made them. If you don't like the sex that God made them, then let me see you create a man with a different sex. Hallelujah. What did the devil do? Sex have to do with the word of God. You do what God told you to do. No matter what, do what God told you today to do. Know this, that Jesus' mother was a woman. She was a woman. She carried Jesus, and Jesus is the word made flesh. So she was the very first one to carry the word of God. Get that straight, and men... I ain't coming against you, but you got to hear another truth, uh, that when Jesus rose, uh, where were you at? Uh, because he told a woman uh, to go and tell the disciples, uh, you were nowhere around. And when Jesus uh, even had the men uh, to sit up, uh, he asked them to watch why he prayed. Uh, Jesus couldn't get you to watch for one hour because you were sitting there asleep. Uh, but God got some women uh, that's in the remnant. Uh, they're in the a remnant. They got some remnant that God got women that will stand up. They will tell the truth. They will preach the gospel. He got men that will preach the gospel that will be on time, that will serve faithful. But don't never let nobody tell you that a woman cannot preach the word of God. If you bring the word of God, guess what? God is calling the women, the children. God said, if you won't do it, I'll have the rock to cry out. If God used an ass, he ought to be able to use a woman to bring forth his word. Yes, you can preach the gospel. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. Preach the word of God. Preach the word of God. Get your house in order. Get your temple in order. Get your home in order. Get your salvation in order. Ask God to help you. Lord, line my life up with your word. Line my church, church up, God. Line it up with your will, God. Let it be the bride, God, that you're looking for when you come back, God. Let us be found without Puerto Rico. Let us not look like Laodicea, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, God, help us to walk up right before you, God. Teach us your way, God. Lord, help us to be teachable, God. Uh, and not rebellious, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today. Hallelujah. We praise your name, God. Let us be steadfast. That means firm and unwavering, God. Let us be servant. Let us be a servant, God. Come to serve, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us not be arrogant, having a revealing and exaggerated sense of who we are, God. Let us be devout, a deep religious commitment to you, O oh God. Let us not be quick-tempered. Don't let us be getting angry easily, O oh God. But let us be blameless. Let us be innocent of wrongdoing. God, don't let us be violent, using or involved in violence involving physical force intended to hurt or damage or kill someone or something. Let us be disciplined, God, showing a controlled form of behavior or way of working in the ministry of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you today, God, for your word. We thank you for your word, Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that you're calling for your houses Lead us. Bring your houses back in order. Restore order back in God's house. Restore the reverence of God back in the house of God. This is Apostle Smallwood. 
with Matters of the Heart on Eternal Life TV every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to sow into the ministry if you're being blessed by the ministry. If God leads you to sow, feel free to sow. God bless you until next time. This is Apostle Smallwood saying God bless you. We hope to change one heart at a time. <music>